So uh, uh, what did you guys invoke that's making all these cell signals go out? You, the Dooms Chapel horror evoked some kind of crazy spirit. <laughs> it has been a crazy ride, yes. <laughs> did, uh, did you guys, um, is, is the Dooms Chapel looking for a new pastor? Because I'm looking for a new congregation. We, we're good on the pasture right now. <laughs> so we'll definitely, uh, yeah, we uh, we can we can use you. We always have room for more. <laughs> so, what was your part, Chris? I know uh, we talked to John last time, and I definitely want to talk to John again. But what what did you do exactly, Chris? Well, uh, I actually produced uh, the Doom Chapel Horror this time around. Um, usually, uh, you know, we're a small production company, so normally a lot of times I'll do, uh, you know, one of the main acting roles and uh, and produce on the side as well. But this was a much bigger production than we were used to, so um, I went ahead and took a cameo role uh, in one of the one of the scenes, and then uh, focused on full time producing. So, excellent. And yeah. is, is, is all the pre-production and shooting done now? Yeah, uh, right now, uh, yeah, we're done with post produ- or pre-production. It's going into post. Uh, we are going to go film one more night just for some more fun shots with the monster. Uh, just for nothing that we need, but stuff that we want. Uh, it's stuff that we didn't get there in, you know, production that we're like, this might be cool if the monster did this to a hunter or something like that. Right. So uh, we're going to go out probably mid-October and uh, do another one of those. But uh, other than that, yeah, principal photography is done. Excellent. Well, I know last time John was telling a little bit about the story of, um, uh, you know, going and showing the sort of the short film first. And uh, just for, for listeners, go ahead and recap that exactly. How did you guys get this sort of pitch, and what, what was the ex- uh, exact uh, uh, story behind that? Sure. Uh, you talking about basically the origin of the Chapel? Yeah. Great, great. Um, basically, in uh, 2009, uh, John Holt wrote a little short called The Hunt, and uh, it was something that we had, we had been, you know, toying around doing a few shorts ourselves, but this seemed like a lot of fun, so... Early, uh, I believe it was in January of 2010, uh, we went out for a couple weekends and filmed the hunt. Um, it ended up being about 13 minutes long. Uh, uh, we threw it up on YouTube. Uh, immediately, just started getting the hits. A right. lot of hits. Um, and uh, it made us you know, realize that, looking at those comments and everything else, people really wanted to see a feature version of this. So um, I had worked on another film last year called Clock Out um, that we had uh, finished last year, and we took the American film market. Uh, last November in L.A., uh, I went ahead and took the hunt with me, uh, kind of a sizzle reel of it, and uh, it got a, a really big response from the guys at Empress Road Pictures. Um, at where? Guys what guys? Are, uh, Empress Road Pictures. Okay. Uh, they're kind of a, a new startup uh, of a, 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 you know, a distributor. Uh, they've been around for about three years now. They're made up of two guys that used to work at Paramount. Uh, that kind of uh, quit there and, and took off on their own, made right. their own little company. And uh, so they got really excited about the hunt, and they, uh, he told me in the meeting that if I came back with a feature version of that, they would distribute it. Excellent. So that, you know, went home, uh, got our writer on it. Uh, within a couple of months, we had a script hammered out, and we started the casting process. We took about two and a half months on casting to get it right, because uh, I'm sure John touched on this before, but... Uh, we wanted to do something different from normal horror movies where they're just, you know, throw a girl at this one and throw a guy at this one. You don't care about the characters. Yeah. And this script was all about acting, and we needed the right actors with the right look, the right talent level to pull this off. So we spent our time casting, and we, we had a, a live cast, or two open casting calls. Uh, we saw about 100 people that way, and then we saw over 200 different video auditions as well. Um and we were able to narrow it down to uh, what turned out to be a fantastic cast and uh, uh, filled with a lot of up-and-coming actors and some uh, older actors that genuinely surprised us with their talent level and uh, went out and made a movie. Now, is the Dooms Chapel, is that, what denomination is that? Is that going to be like Pentecostal and crazy Holy well, Ghost? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's got a little mix of everything, but right now, uh, luckily... Doom's Chapel for us was more about the people that were part of, for lack of a better word, the cult that made up the Doom's Chapel. Uh, the Doom's Chapel compound, as it were, uh, uh, was named after the road that it was based on. Um, and these uh, these cult members were basically described as 
people that didn't really have a structure like the church, um, but it was definitely a cult. They all lived on the land. They all followed a uh, one one leader um, named Jordan, and that was, of course, played by Bill O'Bears Jr. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, uh, that. I wouldn't put a denomination on it per se, but there's definitely uh, a little bit of Pentecostal, a little bit of Snake Charmer Baptist in the in the way they uh, operate. Excellent. Well, that's the best way to go about something like that. I mean, if, if it was like a Southern Baptist, if it was like a Presbyterian, like a Calvinist church, it would be really boring. Right, right, exactly. Nobody so, cares about that. I mean, does it have snake handling, and uh, do we do we get some of that? But it, it's definitely something that, um, it's something that would be very believable from these people. Right. Um, and the reason I say that is, Doom's Chapel is actually designed to be a trilogy. Um, it's, it, it, we really took the best chunk of Doom's Chapel for this movie. Um, if it is successful, it's definitely something that we'll look at doing, and we'll get more into the actual religious practices, uh, if any, you know. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that would be del- delved into more in a later movie, given the opportunity, but uh, right now, it's, uh, you can see anything out of these people. We don't get into it, but you, you know it's there. Right. Now, how's John feeling about it? Is it is it going well? Does it look good? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing really, really good. I, I'll say right now, every <laughs> every night and every morning was a panic attack during filming. You know, just taking on such a huge endeavor, and I I really equated it to war. I mean, you get a strategy, you hit the battlefield, and you hope to God that some of the plan that you had is executed correctly and get it done. If not, you soldier on through. I'm feeling really good. I've started uh, editing now with the uh, the first cut of it, and performances are there. Everything's there. It's like more and more I'm getting excited as I'm putting it together to see this is a finished film. <laughs> the dread has went away, and now you know it's just really exciting. So and, uh, when I hear cult and uh, backwoods stuff, uh, basically what you're saying is you've remade Shyamalan's The Village, right? Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yes. So you're 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 basically Shyamalan. You're the new M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually I'm actually one of the few people that like the village. I I love the, anything with to do with a cult. I like. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I, I think we actually kind of did, but we bettered it. Um, we took something that didn't have that plot twist, obviously, but took some right. basic elements of the film, and we uh, we did something a little bit better. Um, and I can't get into much of dealing with the monster, but ours isn't a guy in a suit, let right. me just say that. Well, that's good, yeah. I mean, I, you, we didn't get many details first time around, but uh, Chris gave me a couple details there that make it a little more tantalizing, Absolutely. which... Uh, pretty quiet. Yeah, I will say this, uh, if you wanted to you know, tell your readers and, and listeners, uh, we do have small glimpses of that monster being made in the video on our Kickstarter page. Uh, if you guys go over to kickstarter.com and go to the Dooms Chapel Horror, you can watch it. We have about a seven minute video total, but the first three and a half minutes are uh, footage from the movie, and uh, and then the end of it, if you get to the interviews, the end of it has a little bit of behind the scenes of the monster build itself. Right. Um, we don't really get into what it looks like finished, but you get to see some of the elements that went into making it. Excellent. Now, uh, Corey mentioned the Kickstarter stuff. What What's going on with that? What are you guys, what's going on there? Well, um, we started a Kickstarter campaign. We needed to raise uh, some money for the post-production, um, mostly for our hardware. Um uh, not that we couldn't get a demo what we have, but it was kind of a struggle. So right. we're, we're you know, looking to uh, get some a little bit better hardware. Um, but we uh, we started the Kickstarter, I believe it was almost three weeks ago. I think we're entering our last week of a 30-day um, campaign. And we put it up, and it immediately got a whole bunch of interest. And right now we've been hovering, uh, we're over a third of the way to the goal. We're trying to raise $5,000. And uh, right now we're uh, over $1,300, almost $1,400 in uh, that has been pledged. Uh, so we're starting a really big push here for our last week, and uh, we're really hopeful that if we can get that, we are uh, we can get the exact thing we need, uh, which is uh, basically a new uh, editing computer. Um, once we have that, it's sky's the limit for us. So we we've got a movie, you know, it's it's there. We just need uh, the right tools to uh, bring it to everyone. But, mm-hmm. uh, that's, that was our goal. We kept it low. You know, $5,000, not a lot of money for post-production. We've right. been very fortunate and very frugal 
struggle with how we've spent our, our, our production budget. Um, so we've been very lucky to not have to struggle. We haven't had to sacrifice a lot to uh, get the shots we needed, and we were able to, you know, uh, use the budget wisely. And now if we can just get this uh, Kickstarter uh, campaign completed, we will be all the way there. And uh, then it's just a matter of time of bringing it to everybody. What's the, uh, what's the biggest thing that you're hoping for what 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 what's the greatest uh um expectation that you have i mean could could we see this uh wider than you know local um you know maiden alley cinemas absolutely um well i'll guarantee you you'll see it wider than that okay our goal and this is what i when we went into making this there is because there's so many films being made now by low budget filmmakers everybody's making a movie you know everybody's got a camera phone you can go out and make a movie yeah. Yeah, the YouTube has you know grown that generation of filmmakers. So that means competition is harder. But the one thing you can do to make make your movie have the most profitable potential is to film it properly with the right cameras, the right equipment, uh, the right crew. And we were fortunate enough to have that. So when I think of the potential of the Doom's Chapel Horror. It is not limited to Redbox. It is not limited to Netflix. It has the potential of being wide release on cinematic screens. Yeah. Now, having said that, I'm also a realistic person. I know that we are low-budget filmmaking, and you cannot plan on having the next Blair Witch Project. Sure. But what you can do is set your movie up for success, and we have done that. It, we use the right cameras, the right crew, everything, and everything's in place. It's just going to come down to finding that right distributor that sees it. Well, have you have you rehearsed this? You sound like you're pitching a corporate line. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, this is just kind of what my job is. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm a producer, and I'm kind of the voice of the production company. So, right. I uh, I tend to be the guy that goes out, raises money, and talks to people and do the interviews. So, uh, are you the silver right. tongue? The silver tongue that was mentioned? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> what I was talking about. Well, I, I'm I'm blessed with the gift of gab. I guess is uh, the way my dad likes to put it. So. So you're the bullshitter, basically. <laughs> I'm you know just what? kidding. I'm just kidding. That I can't do. I can't be the guy that bullshits. I, you know what? <laughs> I, I, you're right. I do sound like those guys, but I tend to steer away from things that um, if I don't believe what I'm saying, I don't feel like it comes across that way. So are you guys yeah, cashing in on this? Are, are, are you cashing in on this yet in the sense of like, you know, if I was, I, I've already tried, you know, I've been like, hey, I was an extra in a movie. So, you know, trying to use that line with chicks or something and. I haven't really, um, I haven't really got anywhere with it, but you guys could really push it. Right. Well, you know what? It's I will say this: I definitely haven't been able to do that, but it has helped us um, get notoriety <laughs> in our, you know, in Western Kentucky, which yeah. is where we make films, which is honestly where it's been the most beneficial. Um, we're we're able to go to people know us now, and we're able to get locations easier, get right. extras easier, you know, and that has been worth its weight in gold. To be honest with right. you, it's it's really opened us up. Uh, you were that night in Paris. We've never had that kind of response. We have 437 extra show up for a shoot without pay. That all worked with us. We had great acting from the extras. It was one of those nights where it was magical because, trust me, it never happens that way. Um, right. And it's still today my favorite night of filming. Well, I'm from Paris, and I can attest to the fact oh. that we're all a town of. Uh, zombies. So, if you ever want to shoot a zombie flick, all of Paris will show up and be excellent zombies. Uh, I absolutely, keep that in mind because uh, I was so thrilled with the response uh, from Paris folks that I can't wait to go back down there to make another movie. So, after, I mean, what would be? Let's let's assume this, uh, you know, goes as planned and everything works out well. What would be next? Would it be Doom Chapel Two, or is there another project? Well, uh, right now, if the movie was successful, absolutely, we would jump on Doom Chapel 2 and uh, capitalize on it. But we're going to turn our sights most likely to werewolves next. Interesting. And John took yeah. that. John took that idea from me because I said he could do a he could <laughs> yeah, do a Stanley heard. Kubrick it's as a cool werewolf fun. movie. Right, yeah, he, he waited until after he talked to you before he told me that he liked werewolves. I, I know that, yeah. Yeah, see, well, see, that's and, and I've been I've been writing it ever since. I'm gonna have to give you that script. And yeah, there you, go. you know, Ku- you Kubrick yeah, is the is the to- he's the tortured director who's you know at night he turns into a werewolf and but in the day he wants I to make movies. That, actually, I, if there's anyone I think that would turn into a werewolf, it's definitely John. <laughs> the first time I met John, uh, when we started talking about filmmaking, doing films together, I guess seven years ago now, 
the, the first thing he said, he wanted to make the, the Ultimate Werewolf movie. And uh, so we're hopeful that uh, we're going to have that opportunity next. Well, I want to be in it. So uh, I want to I want to audition for any roles as a dog, uh, an extra dog, any kind of... Um, we'll see if we can't get one to tear you apart, Jay. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. What about, uh, have you made, has, has there been... I know you said you've made some contacts and got notoriety. Have you have you had any yeah. kind of uh, big guys looking at it yet? I mean, other than me. <laughs> well, um, actually, yeah. Well, you know, no one is big and on the in the same league as you, Jay. But uh, <laughs> we do have a couple of guys that were very interested in the project. Actually, since uh, we started working on it, um, one of them is Todd Farmer, uh, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's a West Kentucky filmmaker. He made My Bloody. He wrote wrote and made uh, Jason X, My Bloody Valentine. Uh, 3D. Uh huh. Um, several other. Uh, I, I am familiar with it. Yeah. Drive Angry, uh, the Nicolas Cage uh, movie from a couple of years back. Right. Um, he, he has definitely been instrumental um, early in the script process. Uh, we were able to get in touch with him through our writer and uh, Jason Turner, and uh, Jason struck up a friendship with them. You know, they're both writers, both from West Kentucky, and they uh, right. and he really enjoyed the script so much so that he actually, for a short time. Uh, they were in talks with, uh, uh, I believe his name is, I, I'm, I don't want to say his name because I'm not exactly sure of it, but one of the producers of the Final Destination movies was interested in coming down to direct. Um, he couldn't get the budget he wanted from New Line, so told them that we weren't going to wait and we were going to go ahead and make the movie. So, Well, that's still cool. Um, I mean, you've, you've got eyes on you. That's what's important. About a month there. We didn't want to say to our crew... But there was about a month there where, uh, you know, Jason, John, and I, we were kind of on pins and needles, like, wow, is this real? Because right. we have guys that live and work in Hollywood uh, yeah. talking to studios about our project that, you know, they wanted to be a part of because they loved the script that much. Excellent. And that was, that was definitely humbling because, uh, uh, you know, you don't always get that. And it, it, it's neat to have someone in that position notice you. And although it didn't work out, which is fine, uh, we didn't let that sway us, and uh, we went ahead and made the movie anyway because we knew we had it and we were ready. Well, uh, I will say that uh, just to kind of toot my own horn a little bit, uh, to be playing the, playing the part of the arrogant asshole uh, interviewer, I did get to I got a chance to interview the co screenwriter of JFK, Oliver Stone's JFK. So I could uh, I could I could try to get uh, Oliver Stone to direct your next horror movie. What would that be like? <laughs> Holly Stone on this, we could throw in some black and white footage. <laughs> exactly, um, right? You know. <laughs> JFK gets assassinated, but he comes back and he's a lichen. Oh, there we go. That, well, let's work that into JFK. Honestly, if it works for Abraham Lincoln, why not JFK? <laughs> <World War? laughs> right. I think that should be our next movie. Um, you know, I, I think it absolutely should. Yeah. Do, have you guys ever seen the Ben Stiller show? Yeah, I remember that show, absolutely. Do you remember the uh, Oliver Stoneland skit? I don't think I do. Okay, you got to look this up next time you're on Google. Okay. It's really, really funny, but but there's basically, it's a theme park uh, all based around Oliver Stone's movies. It's a, it's a really funny uh, skit. Look it up next time. But, so, um, what, what, what about the actors? How are the actors feeling now? Are they, are they, are they satisfied, or, or what's up with them? Uh, yes. Yeah. They have been, I, let me, I can't say enough good things about our cast and crew. Uh, we were so fortunate, God, so fortunate to find the right people that, that have stuck with us. Um, you know, originally we had, we had attended for about, there would be about a two-week uh, main principal photography schedule plus a couple of weekends. Well, that turned into a two-week plus five or six weekends. And, boy, none of them have complained. I've been waiting for them to complain and hate it, but they haven't. They've shown up. They've been there. They've worked their asses off, and I, I can't say enough good things about them. Our actors have, have honestly grown so much since we started. Um, a couple of them have far surpassed what we could even hope for. Um, so it, it's it's been a journey that I'm very excited to have uh, been a part of with this group of people. Now, I know that funny man Andy Wiggins has a few little spots. Does he show up any more than... Uh, a redneck townsman in Paris, or does he come back anywhere else? Well, we sprinkle Andy throughout the film as uh, as Jed Keith, which is his character's name. Um, Andy Wiggins is a comic genius. Uh, I, I have definitely 
definitely known this since we got into filmmaking. He was in our first film, In the Hunt, and, and uh, then we did a movie today, t- uh, together called What a Pair, which was basically a buddy cop comedy. Um, and his, his timing and his wit and how fast he comes up with things is second to none. Um, so we knew when we had this comic relief redneck character, there was only one person to play it. And uh, I'll just say that Andy Wiggins nailed that part. So I'm uh, very excited for people to see him on screen. Excellent. Um, well, so we got the Kickstarter page going, and I guess I, I want to. I do want to encourage the listeners to go over there, and if you can donate, of course. Uh, my listeners are cheapo nerds who don't donate to my site very much, so don't get your right. hopes up. Well, um, yeah. uh, I know we were, you know, we set our sites low. Uh, you know, but I, obviously five thousand dollars is no, no, you know, piece of chump change. But uh, compared to a lot of the other projects, you know, on, on Kickstarter, uh, it was a reasonable amount of money. Um, I will say this to listeners: this is been a labor of love for us to to be a part of and to make this movie happen. So I would say that if you can spare 10 bucks or even 20, which, by the way, will get you a digital copy of the movie when it comes out uh, as a reward, if you can spare that much money to help us out, a couple hundred of you doing that would put us over the goal. Um, you know, and we need everyone. We need everyone to, to help us get there. And it's not just about, you know, give us money. It's about us being able to give you guys something that you look back and say, man, that movie was really good. I really enjoyed that. Because yeah. that's what we want to do for, for everyone that was even knows of our movie or will ever watch it. Um, you know, and that's what we need uh, the support to come from is, is horror fans and, and movie fans and local filmmaking fans and anyone that will, you know, come be a part of it. That's what we need. Um, and, you know, so that's, I guess, all I have to say about it. Hey, that. Jenny. Yeah. We've got special here. We've got one of the... Uh, one of the main actors in our wardrobe mistress here. That's cool. If you want to ask him any questions, we got Josh here. Josh Robinson played, uh, we played Samuel in the movie, one of the main bad guys. Well, since, Josh, since you've... Hey, you've, Jay, you've, you've hey, Jay, nice to, nice to talk to you. What's up, Josh? You've, you, uh, you, guys have, you guys have turned Jay's... Jack in class, man. Yeah, you guys have turned Jay's analysis into an NPR broadcast. We're going to be asking for more money here in a moment. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. You know how NPR does their soft voice, and then they ask you for money. That was very nice. Um, well, what, Josh, what did you think? How was it? About doing the chapel? Yeah. Well, how was it? I loved it. I, it was the first time I got to, it was the first opportunity I've had to be a, a bad guy. Right. And, uh, and so that was a lot of fun. I got to cut my hair real silly and. I got to play with a knife all the time, and he's a scary guy. Do they? Do, well, are you inducted into their cult now, or are you? Are you, do you still have free thinking? Well, I'm, I, was, I play the, the right hand man to the cult leader, um, who played uh, Bill Overs Jr. played the cult leader, right? Um, and um, and so I, he he is uh, trying to get the, the lead character to. <coughs> confront these demons and deal with the fact that he's uh, asked for um, punishment to these people who who have wronged him in his life. And I, as the right-hand man of the leader, want nothing more than to see the lead character in pain and agony. And so for the whole film, uh, you just see me struggling with ready to be unleashed um, by Bill and ready to uh, ready to kill the, the lead character, you know. I'm just yeah. waiting on the man. So Academy Award, we're talking for you, right? <laughs> Be positive now. Come on, think big. He was one of my more pleasurable people to work with and direct on this film. He is not far from that, sir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. See, <laughs> you can see uh, a footage of me portraying Sam, and uh, in our Kickstarter page, Bill is also featured quite a bit. On that uh, that Kickstarter reel, it's a it's a it's a good representation of the kind of film that we are that we're aiming for. Excellent. Well, uh, I want to thank you guys, and definitely uh, it's so we go to Kickstarter, and then we'll type in what uh, Doom's Chapel Horror, right? And it'll come up. That's right. I'll just put a link in the interview, so you guys don't have to worry about that. But um, 
Have you guys done any other big interviews? Been on NPR yet? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not exactly their type. Right. <laughs> well, any other big interviews going? Uh, not yeah. right now. Um, just print for a few more sites. Yeah, we've done a few print interviews, but nothing, uh, nothing where we get to talk to uh, a lovely interviewer such as yourself. Right. Yeah, only the one we did do, uh, on the podcast, but not in a living podcast. Just, uh, is there is, is there a, uh, a a main website or is it just the Kickstarter page right now? Uh, there's actually just the Facebook page and uh, the Kickstarter page is linked off of that as well, but it's just Facebook forward slash the Jamboard Order. Right. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you guys again, and uh, this has definitely been fun. We're looking forward to the film. We definitely hope the best for it. We hope it gets a wide release. And um, anything else you guys want to say? Uh, just visit our Kickstarter page. Help us get there. And uh, if you guys do that, we're going to give you guys a kick-ass movie. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. What did you say, Jay? I said thanks a lot, and uh, maybe we'll talk to you guys again in the future uh, after the release or something. Sounds great, Jay. Anytime. Thank you so much, man. Definitely. Anytime.